Hey everyone, welcome back to the Autoflux Games Season 2. Now this challenge has been titled, Can You Survive the Rhino? The rules are pretty simple, but to explain them, I think I can only demonstrate. Here we go, we have the Rhino right here, and we have at the very end, the Vats e-spec. Now we are going in descending order from who currently is in first to who currently is in last. So last place will be the Rhino versus the Rhino. Now you can see the Vats e-spec, it has its engine off, it's just sitting here waiting sideways, and the uh, Rhino is here as well, ready to go. Let's give it a start. Now this challenge is incredibly simple. All I'm going to do is accelerate. The Rhino is not particularly quick, but it can get up to some decent speed, so we just accelerate just like this, and we shall see if the VATS e-spec can survive a hit from the Rhino. Now, with all the cars, I'm going to aim in between the two wheels, and you can see that there has been some significant devastation. Now, I promise you that some cars will survive this. At least I think so. Well, first things first, we're going to put the Rhino back in its place. We got to take off the handbrake, otherwise the brakes are going to overheat. And now we take a look at the e-spec. It's not looking too good. Uh, so, it can't, will it start? It, it will start. Amazingly, this engine here will start. So, that's the first thing to consider. Does it start? That is worth two points. Now, it is moving, but that's not me doing it. So, it does not drive which is unfortunate, and it, it's kind of just moving on its own right now. Here we go with the points though. Does it have wheels that are attached? I think that we can consider maybe two of these wheels to be attached, although the front wheels are not turning, so it's going to be one wheel attached, which means one point. That is out of a possible four, it's going to be one per each wheel. And then, did the driver survive? Honestly, uh, we're going to just go with the North American style left hand driving, and yeah, they, I don't think they survived, so that's two points gone. Does it drive? No. Does it turn? No. So that is a total of three points out of a possible 12 for the Vats e-spec. All right, the King XR5 is here, ready to be hit by the Rhino. Now, one thing to note about the Rhino, now that we know the rules, is that it is quite high in the front. So it has quite a significant distance uh, between the actual bumper and the ground, which means that cars that are low are just going to fly underneath it and get totally crushed by the wheels. But anything that's high should just get pushed into the wall, in which case it should have a better chance of surviving. So let's see if anything will actually drive today. And we are off once again with the Rhino. Uh, getting up to speed, it really only gets to maybe 90 kilometers an hour. Yeah, there's 90 right there. Do we hit 100 doing this? Yeah, so it just barely makes it to 100. And once we hit that wall, yeah, there is, uh, there's not much left of the <laughs> King XR5. Okay, again, there has been some significant devastation. I'm seeing that one wheel is missing already, but here's the question. Does it start? Oh, it does start, so that is a nice two points for the King XR5. Now, does it drive? Uh, it's moving under its own power, but not really. So for that case, just because it's able to move, I'm going to be giving it one point. Like if it's semi-controlled, in, in this sense, if I hold down the, the th trigger, then we actually do move. So I'm considering that to be one out of two possible points. Does it turn? Uh, there, there is one steering wheel, but it, it does not turn, so it's going to get zero points for that. And the driver probably did not survive, so that's also zero points. Oh, and one last thing as well, how many wheels are attached? Uh, there are two wheels attached, which means it started, so two points. Two wheels attached, that's four. Driver survived, that is none. Uh, does it drive? Yes, we'll consider that. And does it turn? No, so that is five points out of a possible 12. Okay, up next we have the Group C Owl. This event is actually going to be pretty quick from the looks of things, uh, but this car is extremely low, which, mean, which means it's going to be taking a brunt of force from the wheels of the Rhino, so hopefully it does well. However, I think that cars that get pushed are more likely to survive. Uh, the driver is actually in the center of this car, so yeah, we'll see how that goes, but let's give it a try. Hopefully it can do a little bit better than the previous two. Every time I'm driving this, I ask myself, will this vehicle survive? And the answer is probably no, but every single time the Rhino survives, and that means that every single time the Rhino is the real winner here. And boom. 
Ooh, that was a good hit there. Uh, it was a little off to the side, but still, I think that was a fair shot. It seems like all of the wheels are still attached, which is a bit of a shock. I don't know, this one has actually fared quite well in terms of damage. Uh, so let's see, does it start? Yes, that V16 roars to life, that is two points. Uh, how many wheels does it have? It has four wheels, which means that is an instant six points right there. Now, does it drive? Um, oh my goodness, it drives? It steers? What the heck? <laughs> I think we might have a possible winner here. That's the best so far. That is really good. And for the driver surviving thing, honestly, I think they would be pretty badly injured, but they probably would survive, so I'm going to give it one point for that. That is 11 points out of a possible 12 for the Group C Owl. My goodness. I did not think that this one would fare so well. Right, up next we have the Trig Trig X. This is actually the car that I tested this challenge on. And admittedly, in the testing, it did survive, similar to the Group C Owl. So we'll have to see how it does. Uh, it's kind of high, like it's higher than the Group C Owl, but it's not much higher. So hopefully it'll just take its force from the wheels, because that seems to be working out better. And off we go again with the Rhino. I'm really looking forward to that Rhino versus Rhino clash coming up. It's going to be good. Uh, but it just again, very lightly steering here to keep it into the center. And right in between those wheels, let's give a big hit on the Trig Trig X, and <laughs> wow, goodness. So in that case, the Rhino flew up and smashed into the wall, and the Trig Trig X not looking too great. Uh, will it start? That's our first thing on the list, and the answer is yes. Everything has been able to start so far, which is surprising. I guess uh, just not displacing the engine enough to break it. How many wheels does it have? Well, it seems like we actually have all four wheels once again, so that is a bonus of four points on top of that. That's pretty nice. Uh, did the driver survive? Actually, the driver did survive. I think that they would have lived through that. Um, you can see that only half of the, not even half of the cabin is actually crushed. Uh, I think they would have been fine, so that's another two points right there. Does it drive? And the answer to that is yes. It is scraping really badly on the ground, but it does drive. Next thing is, does it turn? Uh, it turns one way. <laughs> I'm going to give it, um, let's see, hold on. If we can somehow turn left, then I'm going to give it two points. Ooh, that's barely. You have to let off the gas to let it turn left. I don't know. I think that's going to be a one point thing there. So that's 11 points for the Trig Trig X. So up next we have the Bomero 3.0, another very wide uh, supercar. I guess it could be considered a hypercar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this one, its horsepower is not going to help it in this case. It's all about uh, different body styles being better than others at taking a brunt from the Rhino. In this case, I have no idea. It's similar in height to the Trig Trig X, so maybe it'll live? Let's see. I think that the Trig Trig X got a bit of a break just because the Rhino kind of launched off of it, uh, but in this case, I'm not sure about the Bomero. It's so wide that it has quite a distance to cover. Let's see what the Rhino will do though. And smash! Goodness! Oh wow, that one was interesting as well. It seems like it ramped up and then hit the wall once again, but it didn't really do that much to the back end of the Bomero. It seems to be going right after that engine. And having a look at the Bomero 3.0, uh, its intakes are sticking out of the hood. It appears to have lost at least one wheel, but let's go through the list. So does it start? Oh yes, it still does. That V10 has roared to life. How many wheels does it have? Uh, let's see, is that one wheel on the side there attached? Um... It's hard to tell. Okay, that's a that's a definite no on that wheel being attached. But everything else appears to be attached. So that is three points there, making for a total of five. Did the driver survive? I'm going to say in this case that they were probably injured, but they most likely survived. Um, just going based on that same logic that we did with the Trig Trig X. This one is damaged a little bit further in, so I'm going to say that that's one point, uh, which means a total of six. And now does it drive? The answer is... It does drive. Not well, but I don't really expect anything to drive well, so that is a nice two points there. Right, so that is eight total points for the Bomero. And then, does it turn is our final challenge. It actually does turn entirely, so that is a cool 
10 points for the Bumero. Up next, we have the Saint Ultra R. Now, this is the first non-car that's going in the running uh, in this leaderboard. Um, it is much, much taller than most vehicles that have gone so far, which means it's probably going to take the full brunt of the Rhino. I don't think the Rhino is going to fly up like it did before. So the Saint Ultra R is going to have a challenge on its hands. That being said, it is made of the highest quality material, and it is generally a stiff chassis, so hopefully it can like withstand the force of the Rhino. I think the vehicle I'm most excited to see, other than Rhino versus Rhino, is actually Rhino versus Brodozer. Uh, I feel that like the bigger vehicles are just a cooler challenge uh, for the Rhino to crush. So let's give it a try here. What will happen to the Saint Ultra R? Boom! Oh, it's been taken for a ride. That was pretty darn good there. Um, it seems like the Rhino has bitten a huge piece out of the Saint Ultra R. Let's reset it and take a closer look. Yikes, this is not looking particularly good. That is at least two wheels right out of the gate. And it looks like the back has survived, but my goodness, that did not fare as well as I was hoping. Okay, let's see. Does it start? It does start. That is an easy two points for the Saint Ultra R. How many wheels does it have left? Well, it's got two, so that is a nice four points um, in total for it. Currently, did the driver survive? Uh, based on our judgments of the past, I'm given that one point. Looks like about half the cabin was destroyed, so yes, the driver did survive, but with injuries, that is five points. Does it drive? Ah, uh, that is movement. It just clipped through its wheel there. I'm going to say that that's one point for driving, and when it comes to steering, it's going to get zero, because my goodness... Well, it doesn't have any front wheels, so I guess that's what you expect. So yeah, that is six points for the Saint Ultra R. So the Titans are about to collide. It is Zeus versus Poseidon, or the Bugo versus the Rhino. Now, the Bugo is very small, uh, very light, and is likely going to be taken for a significant ride once it gets hit by the Rhino. Let's give it a try, though. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens to this little boxy thing. The Rhino is hungry for some Bugo. Let's see what it'll do. I don't anticipate that the Bugo is going to do too well. In fact, it might be the only vehicle that doesn't start just because it's very low quality. Uh, let's see though. Let's give it a nice view. <laughs> Will the Bugo live? Oh, that, that's not looking good at all. The Bugo has been turned into an actual pancake. I'm sorry. Bugo fans. So the Rhino literally ate the Bugo and it spat out this pancake. Uh, let's see if it meets any of their criteria. Does the Bugo start? What the heck? That I-4 is still alive. Where even is it? Oh my goodness, it remains pretty much untouched. How is this even possible? The heart of the Bugo lives. Okay, so that is two points minimum for the Bugo. How many wheels does it have? Uh, it has at least one rear wheel that I can see is mildly attached, but nothing is working. Uh, um, it's hard to tell, so I'm just going to say that that rear wheel is indeed attached, uh, so the Buco will get one point for that. However, uh, the driver did not survive that collision, so zero. And does it drive? No, the front wheels have been disconnected, so it does not drive or turn. That means the Bugo gets a total of three points. Surprising, to be honest. Alright, next up on the list is the Panther Tree Turbo. This is the first actual pickup truck to go. Uh, this one will be interesting as well. I think that, well, it's got a very low bed, uh, but it's also a pretty tough beast. Like, this thing is strong. Um, hopefully its engine will hold out. Every engine has so far, but this one is quite big. Uh, we'll see what happens to the cab versus the bed. Alright, it's the same old, same old in terms of acceleration. The Rhino does not get any stronger, but it continues to destroy all of the competition. Uh, let's see what it'll do to the tree turbo. I am very interested to find out. Ooh, yikes, that was not good. It seems like the, it has, the bumper on the Rhino has grabbed the top of the panther and just flattened it. So here's a look at the tree turbo. It looks pretty normal from this side. But once you come to the other side, you'll see that there is not much left. Uh, it seems to have destroyed the entire center of it and turned it into a C shape. Uh, that does not bode well for the tree turbo. Let's see if it makes any points on the list. So does it start? Yes, that I-6 turbo is still going, which is surprising, but it seems to have been at least the least affected. 
although it is quite angled. Um, did any of the wheels actually stick? It seems like one rear wheel minimum, uh, and probably one front. Nope, no front, so I'm turning the wheels right now and nothing is actually turning, so uh, we'll give it one rear wheel there for a total of three points. Uh, did the driver survive? No chance. Uh, does it drive? No, it doesn't, and it doesn't turn either. That is three points for the tree turbo. Pretty disappointing, to be honest, but hey, I guess it wasn't as strong as we thought. Now, the Rhino has faced a decent competition so far, uh, just crashing into these small vehicles, but now it's time for another heavyweight. This is the Brodozer 2.0. It is probably the tallest vehicle after the Rhino, or probably even taller than the Rhino. This thing is jacked up as high as it goes. Uh, I worry for this car just because the bumper is going to smash right in between those two doors and it's not going to be good. I'm betting the engine will start and I'm doubting it will drive. Let's see what the Rhino can do. <laughs> We've got Brodozer 2.0 in our sights with the Rhino. I'm going to try to get a slightly different angle on this one. We might be able to see the chassis twist. We could have done slow motion, but at this point it's too late. Let's crash into this thing and see what we can do. Ooh. That was some devastation there, my goodness. Okay, things are not looking particularly good for the Brodozer just from this angle that I've teleported to. Oh boy. Um, it seems like the wheels have been completely torn off, although it looks like it has one still attached. Um, the V8 actually does look like it's in pretty reasonable shape. It's still in the center of the, the two like frame rails, which is good. So it should start. Okay, no problem there. Uh, how many wheels are still attached? So we have one. Okay, we have one. <laughs> That's at least something. And it is four-wheel drive, so it should be able to move. Um, did the driver survive? I'm afraid they did not. So, yeah, certainly we're at three points currently. Uh, does it drive? That's a no. And does it turn? Well, it doesn't drive, so it doesn't turn either. Another three-point score seems to be a very common thing in this competition. Now, for this competition, the San Andreas High has volunteered to go, but that means that the San Andreas Low is going to be running in the next single vehicle competition, just one where they can't both go. So, this one is interesting. It's basically just the jacked-up version of the San Andreas Low. Actually, that's exactly what it is. I don't know. Can the uh, early 80s slash 70s engineering hold up to the Rhino? I feel like the high might have a very significant disadvantage just because the top of it is gonna, going to definitely come in contact with the bumper on the Rhino. Uh, it's probably going to get hit pretty hard here. Let's see. I'm sorry in advance. To all you Grand Theft Auto fans, my goodness. Oh boy. Uh, there is not much left after that hit. Okay, so the lowrider has become the flatliner. Uh, it no longer even can be on its wheels. It seems the whole chassis has been twisted very drastically. My goodness, that is the most deformation we have seen today. Uh, will the engine start? It seems like it's smoking. No, it will not. That is the first engine today to not start. My goodness. So that means it does not drive. Uh, it does not turn, even though it actually does have one turning wheel, which is cool, but unfortunate. This is so sad, but it's only going to get points for having wheels. That's it. It seems like only two of the wheels are actually attached because this rear one is, or this upper rear one, I mean, is like that's that's not attached so it's only two wheels attached which means the san andreas only gets two points next on the list we have the king xr8 this is a ctsv sort of clone um it's kind of just like a fatter version of most of the other cars that i've gone it's not really any heavier or any different uh it'll be interesting to see what the wagon body does versus the rhino though it is a bit taller so it's probably going to hit the bumper which means it's probably not going to do as good uh, we'll just have to see, though. I mean, so far, the lowest cars have done well, uh, and which it's kind of an interesting thing to see. Like, after this, we have the Rhino left, and that's obviously pretty tall. Um, we'll have to see if the Rhino can even move the Rhino. But before we get to that, we have to plow through the King XR8 first. Hopefully, it will survive. I mean, the last couple vehicles have done pretty poorly. Uh, I want to get something that'll drive again. That'd be cool to see. Um, so here we go. King XR8 versus the Rhino, and 
Ooh, wow. Okay, nothing has managed to send the Rhino up onto the barricade, but that means the King XR8 has rolled over as well, which means it's going to be not getting the points for driving. Taking a closer look, it actually fared not too poorly. It managed to get a wheel all the way up here, which is shocking. Uh, does it start though? It does. Does it drive? It would have, but it flipped over. And it seems like those wheels are indeed attached. Uh, so we're going to have to do points real quick here. Um, does it start? Yes, that is uh, two points there. Are those wheels attached? I mean, technically, yes. So we'll give it another three. That's five points. Did the driver survive? I'm going to say that's a one point thing there. So that's six points. And then that's it because it can't drive or turn. So six points for the XR8. Now, I've kept you all the way to the end. It is the Rhino versus the Rhino. Which one will win? <laughs> I have no idea, but this kind of decides the fate of this. If this Rhino manages to check off all of the boxes, which I'm assuming it probably will, then it'll get a full score, and then it will have won this competition by default, because nothing else has gotten a full score. Let's see what the Rhino versus Rhino will do. All right, this is an intensive battle coming up here. This Rhino is getting prepared to smash into the other rival. Rival Rhino, I mean. The thing is that nobody really wins here, uh, because this Rhino has been winning the entire time, but this one, not so much. And BAM! Oh, that was a hard hit. But my goodness, it seems like this Rhino might have, might have won the day. That was a really hard hit. But when you have to move that much weight, even with that much weight and momentum, I mean, it wasn't even that much. That was a good hit, though. Okay, taking a look at the damage on the smashed Rhino, it seems to have just been dented, um, but that looks to be it. Like, everything else is pretty much intact. The uh, giant, well, it was a big V12 until you put it in the Rhino and it looks tiny, uh, is fully intact, and it seems like everything else is in reasonable condition. It has kept all four wheels, Let's see if it'll start. Okay, that's two points. How many wheels does it have? That is four, so that is an instant six points. Does it drive? <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. It passes all of the requirements. The Rhino is still fully functional. That is 12 points. The reigning champion of the Rhino competition is indeed the Rhino. So looking at the leaderboard from purely j just this event, we can see that the Rhino has come in first, and what I'm going to be doing is the points that they got in this competition are not going to be split, just like I normally do where I just order the first place in the event and give them 12, and then the last place gets 0 or 1. Uh, in this case, I'm just uh, going to give them the points that they got. It's going to change up the leaderboard quite a bit, so take a look at this. The Rhino has 12 points. The Group C Owl got 11, same with the Trig Tree X, the Bumero had 10, uh, the Saint Ultra R had 6, the King XR8 had 6 as well, uh, the XR5 with 5 points, and then the Vatsy Spec, the Bugo, the Tree Turbo, the Brodozer, all had 3 points, and then the San Andreas with 2. So it was a pretty interesting event, it seemed like the lower cars won, with the exception of course of the Rhino. And there was a bit of a mid-pack battle as well between the... Uh, the couple of sixes and fives there. That's, it's an interesting event, actually. It turned out a little bit more spread out than I thought it would be. But if you're looking at the total scores, it seems like we have a clear victor of the first three events so far. It is the Group C Owl in first with 28.5 points. That comes from doing well as well in the Rhino Smash, getting 11 points. My goodness, that car is getting hard to beat. Uh, next, we have the Trig Trig X with 27 points. Uh, again, a hard one to beat. It did very well in the, the previous competition that we just did. The Bomero 3.0 is in third with 26 points. The King XR5 is in fourth with 23. The, Va the Vats E Spec is in fifth with 21. The Saint Ultra R is in sixth with 20. The Bugo is in seventh with 16. And then we have the Panther Tree Turbo with 15 and a half, the Rhino with 15, the XR8 with 15, the Brodos are with 13, and the San Andreas with 11. So hopefully you enjoyed this competition, hopefully you're enjoying the series so far. Uh, yeah, there'll be another one next week, so look forward to that, but this has been a bit of a mix-up. The Rhino has jumped from last place all the way up to ninth place, so that's pretty decent, like it has made three places on one event. 
but we still have another three events to go, and then we also have the poll. So if you've been watching until the end, you'll know that there is a poll. Please go ahead and vote on that. Uh, I'll be announcing it the video before the final video, so in the final event I'll announce it to everybody at the beginning of the video like usual, and then hopefully they'll vote as well, so we can get a decent number of uh, votes. But if you haven't voted yet, make sure to do so, and I'll see you again next week.